I know you all want to see how we continue with the Mora project, how we can get it going and testing. I would love to do that, but I'm still missing some parts. In the meantime, I saw a lot of comments underneath the video, how much heat can such a radiator dissipate? And how much heat, for example, would you need or how much radiator surface do you need to dissipate the heat of an RTX 4090, such as this 4090 matrix? And I asked myself the same question. Then I came across this baby boy and this is for dual 40 millimeter fans. I wish I found one for a single 40 millimeter fans, but, or for a single 40 millimeter fan, but it seems to be not existing. So that was basically the smallest radiator I could find. And we will pair this with some of the strongest fans I could find for 40 millimeters size. Hetzen is expanding its offering with the new object storage. High performance, scalable and S3 compatible for storing unstructured data starting at just $5.99 per month. With hundreds of thousands of servers, Hetzner is one of Europe's leading hosting providers and operates state-of-the-art data centers in Nuremberg, Falkenstein and Helsinki. The new storage solution is perfect for data-intensive applications offering maximum flexibility. It allows you to securely store and manage massive amounts of data in self-contained environments known as buckets according to your needs. All of this is powered by Hetzner's own ES server systems. The EX130 dedicated server serves as the base for this. And the special feature here is that a server consists of three units, the EX130 and two units with HDDs. Find out more in the link below. I think it's possible that this will work. The question is just how well will it work? And that might be quite questionable. In general, if you're looking at any kind of radiator in any kind of size, you might find a listing that it can dissipate, for example, 200 watts. The question is, what will be the delta temperature between the air and the water? And also, how cold will your air be? Because only the result really matters. I mean, with this, we can probably easily dissipate 20 watts and the water temperature will be quite cold. We can probably also dissipate 100 watts and then the water will just be much warmer. So that is always a question and something to take into account, which is not that easy yeah, to answer. So that's our baby radiator from Alphacool, which has surprisingly good connection options. As you can see, from three sides, you could connect G1 4th thread fittings, which is pretty awesome. And then we have three lines in between where the water will flow through, which is not really much. But I mean, that's just, that's just because of the size. So those are the three channels that will have the water flowing through. And in between we have the fins where we will push air through. And in theory, four mounting locations for fans. The fans are Delta Electronics counter rotary fans. That means that we have basically two fans connected with each other and they're counter rotary in terms of the orientation, how these fans spin, what you can see here, the one in this direction. So that is counterclockwise and this one will spin, spin clockwise, which is interesting. And they also have different blade geometry and also different speeds. One of them spins at 20,500 RPM, the other one at 17,000 RPM. I'm not sure which one is doing which, but a power consumption of one of these fans is 18 watts which is enormous and completely forget about trying to hook up two to one mainboard fan connector. That would just be too much current. That would definitely not work. I set up a small test loop. We have our 4090 matrix as a heat source, then a TDC pump and here it's flowing through the radiator. And before I proceed mounting any fan suit, I first want to run it quickly, see if nothing leaks because I wasn't sure how these fittings attached to it. Felt a bit weird, so I just want to double check that first. Definitely have to add some more water to the loop. No, that's not white coolant. It's simply a ton of air that's in the loop right now. So I will have to wait a little bit until the air comes out, but at least no leaks. Also not leaking on the cart. The cart is running with our self-made DIY water block, which still performs really good. Now in idle, obviously we didn't do anything yet, but yeah, 25 degrees Celsius, GPU temperature. However, these fans are probably not made to be screwed on a radiator. So yeah, there's some problem with the mounting. So just normal M3 screw 
is a bit problematic, just doesn't fit inside. You know what that means. Just kidding, we will use a file by hand. It was only a tiny amount I had to remove. Screw now fits, I also took off the cable from that side because otherwise we just can't, yeah, screw it on. As I pointed out earlier, with the power consumption of 18 watt roughly per fan, this can be a challenge, especially if you're thinking about hooking up multiple fans to one of the connectors on the motherboard. That just won't work. And I will simply use my Lumpton controller that I previously had mounted on my Mora, and this should be able to deliver 20 watts per channel. That should be ideal. Now that should be interesting. I think the fan control is on the lowest speed right now, so we will switch on the system. Pump is running, air settle down a little bit. I'm already sorry. I'm already sorry for the noise. Like, listen to this. Yeah, this this is this is insane. But I will tune it down a little bit for now. But oh yeah, I I have to really speed up the fan control to get the fans running. Now I can tune it down. Okay, okay, that, that's not too bad, but these are some loud fans. It's always a bit difficult to visualize the fan speed, but you can see that the, the fan box, yeah. Crazy. We will start a little bit slower and gentle to see if this is instantly failing or not. The fans are spinning at a lower RPM, so I don't have to suffer as much and you hopefully also don't have to suffer as much. This is Remnant 2 with a more relaxed gaming scene. You can see the board power draw is currently about 300 watts and I just want to see first if this is working or if this might already be failing, then we don't even have to bother to try 450 watts. And after only two minutes, we already have a water temperature of about 38 degrees Celsius and you can see it's still increasing. Another five minutes later, it's still increasing. We are already at 45 degrees Celsius water temperature. And I now also taped a temperature sensor to the back of the radiator to check the air temperature. And the closer those two are together, the better yeah, the heat dissipation through the radiator works. So currently it's about 7 Kelvin difference or 7 degrees Celsius. It's the same. Once we approach about 50 degrees Celsius, I want to crank up the fans a little bit to counter the increasing temperature. It is still in, I would say, an okay region. We now have 48 degrees Celsius water and the GPU is at about 55 degrees Celsius. That shows that the GPU cooler just works extremely well and the cart is still in a safe zone even though the water with 50 degrees Celsius is quite warm. Well, okay, I think we already reached that point. Yeah, say goodbye to my ears and I'm sorry that you probably have to suffer as well a little bit. Oh my God. I hope that the microphone cancels this out a little bit. I hope so for you guys, but you can see the water temperature is now dropping. That is great. And because it worked so well previously, I now decided to switch to 3D Mark Speedway, which pushes the cart to the 450 watts. It has been running for over 15 minutes. Maybe not great, but it's running. And the water temperature, it is still slowly increasing, but really slow. You might be able to see it right now, it increased a little bit, but it will take time to reach probably maybe 60 degrees Celsius. The air temperature almost maxed out 39 degrees Celsius. And if we go back over to our system, you can see that 3D Mark is still running. I also opened hardware info on the bottom because this easily allows to display also the time that it has been running over 15 minutes. And the temperatures, they're maybe not as cold as what you would expect for water cooling, but with 68 degrees Celsius on the GPU, it's not cold, but it still works. The memory temperature though, that is maybe a bit high with 94 degrees Celsius. After 30 minutes, the temperature evens out at 59.5 degrees Celsius. It's not increasing anymore. So yeah, you can definitely cool an RDX 5090 with this, but can we get the temperature maybe a little bit colder? Because yeah, it doesn't really feel quite right. And maybe push-pull can do it. I'm not sure if you can see it, but this is uh, a really sketchy thing to do because of the airflow already spinning this fan without it being actually running. 
and it doesn't make it better that the water temperature is 60 degrees Celsius, which is close to burning my fingers. The system just shut down. I'm not quite sure why. Maybe it was getting a little bit too warm for the cart. Well, I hope that if we can maybe drop the water temperature a little bit, it will come back alive. Well, shut down again. That's not good. If I try to power on the system, the PSU instantly clicks, which is typically a sign for either OCP or some short circuit protection. Did we just overcurrent anything on a PSU or did we fry the GPU? Well, even with the card out of the slot, the system doesn't start. So that's a good sign. Did we kill the PSU? I found a different problem. I tried to get the four fans spinning at 100%, which didn't work. And then I touched the fan controller and basically burned my finger. This is currently measuring the controller of the fan controller and it is out of range. The range goes up to 80 degrees Celsius on this th thermometer, which means this is warmer or hotter than 80 degrees Celsius and I can't get them up to 100% fan speed. And to be fully honest, after like I can quickly get it to 100 and then it will drop down probably because it gets too warm. And I was already concerned that I maybe fried my, my cart, which I'm happy that it wasn't the case. So everything is back up and running. I'm not sure what it was with the PSU, but also just subjectively, it's not more airflow than before. So I, I think it might be a good point to end this. But yeah, theoretically it would have worked with eight fans. Basically, I mean, it's four double kind of fans and a small radiator for the 4090. Now to go back to the question from the beginning. How much heat can you dissipate through a small radiator? Well, with this one, it seems that the 450 watts are possible. Are they possible in a good way? Probably not. Can you cool an RTX 4090 with this? Seems like it. Is it a good idea? Probably also not. I wouldn't recommend it. Especially the memory temperature of 94 degrees Celsius for a short time period and testing this for 30 minutes, probably not really an issue, but for a longer time period, I don't think it's good to do so. So I can't recommend it, but it just shows that giving a radiator a simple watts rating is probably not really helpful as long as you don't get extra information about a delta in water temperature, airflow, whatever. Yeah, that was an experiment. An experiment that was quite annoying. I can tell you for the 30 minutes I had to wait to see if it's possible. That was painful. I had to leave the room in between because this is, it is just insanely loud. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.